Hi everyone and welcome. We are all very familiar with National Geographic, which deals with so many different topics, including astronomy, science, environmental issues, and history. And when we say history, we almost instantly think of ancient Egypt. So the woman that you can see here happens to be one of the most important and most influential women of the ancient world. So this picture represents the portrait of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh named Hatshepsut. And in this National Geographic magazine, there is actually an article which is exclusively and specifically devoted to Hatshepsut. And the very title of this article says, the she king of Egypt. So we have the word she, which represents femininity, and the word king, which is usually linked and associated with power, masculinity, manhood, and so on. So obviously the author of this article wants to say that Hatshepsut is an ancient Egyptian monarch. But why has the author of this article used the word she king as a substitute for the word queen? Why did he use the word she king instead of simply saying the queen of Egypt? Well, to begin with, we need to know that Hatshepsut actually became a pharaoh during a period of time when the position of a pharaoh was exclusively held by men. So what is so exceptional about her reign? Let's find out more about Hatshepsut. So the first thing we need to know about Hatshepsut was that she was of a pure royal descent. And when she was around the age of 14, she married her half-brother, Tathmosis II. Tathmosis II was already married to an ancient Egyptian woman named Iset, and he already had a son named Tathmosis III. And when Tathmosis II the, the, the passed away around 1479 BC, his son, Tathmosis III, was only three or four years old, so he was very young to rule over Egypt. So his stepmother, Hatshepsut, systematically became his, uh, his regent, his advisor, and then was eventually crowned as the official pharaoh of Egypt during that era. So what is so exceptional about the reign of Pharaoh Hatshepsut? Well, during the reign of Hatshepsut, Egypt had actually achieved an unprecedented economic prosperity. And Hatshepsut actually is exceptionally renowned for being a uh, very prolific builder because she had tremendous building projects. And the first thing, and the first monument that she commissioned in Thebes, which is in modern day Luxor, is her mortuary temple or the funerary temple of Hatshepsut, which was designed by her brilliant architect, Senenmet. I think that we have a picture of, the, yeah, okay. So this is the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut, as you can see, and it is made up of three terraces and within the temple or outside the temple you will find many statues which represents which represent uh pharaoh hatshepsut with uh, the arms crossed on the chest and within that temple within the temple of hatshepsut you will find a pylon a sanctuary uh, a chapel and many other uh, paintings and relief sculptures which emphasize her right to the throne and portray or depict her her journey into the hereafter where she is uh, where she is uh, received by the gods of Egypt. So during the reign of Hatshepsut, Egypt achieved uh, a very uh, unprecedented economic prosperity, and she is known for having organized expeditions to the land of Punt. The land of Punt is uh, an exotic land located in, on the Red Sea coast. It is located in modern day, in modern day uh, Sudan. I mean, the Sudanese, uh, the Sudanese land which, have, which has access to the Red Sea. 
And within the temple of Hatshepsut, you will find many paintings which, are, which depict the expeditions of the Egyptians to uh, the land of Punt and their, and their um, interactions with the Puntites, I mean, the inhabitants of the land of Punt. So in this National Geographic magazine, we have a very interesting illustration of Pharaoh Hatshepsut, who is standing right next to her, step, uh, her stepson, Tuthmosis III. So this is Pharaoh Hatshepsut, Queen Hatshepsut, dressed in pharaonic regalia. She is wearing the Egyptian headdress, or the nemes. She's wearing the false beard to, let's say, um, to, to ensure her authority. And she is waving her scepter all over all the goods and the offerings which the Egyptians brought from the land of Punt. And she is waving this, uh, the, her royal scepter over, over all those offerings, the spices, the jewelries, the myrtrees, to honor uh, the god Amun, who is the king god of, uh, in the ancient Egyptian, who is the king of the gods in, in the ancient Egyptian mythology. Okay? So, uh, so Pharaoh Hatshepsut not only commissioned the construction of her mortuary temple in Thebes, she also commissioned the construction of two giant obelisks in Karnak Temple. Karnak Temple is the most visited uh, monument in Egypt, of course, after the, uh, the pyramids of Giza. So we have in this illustration uh, one of those obelisks which she uh, constructed within Karnak Temple, which is also... Karnak Temple is actually de dedicated to Amun, the king of the gods. So this is the obelisk which, which, she, uh, which Hatshepsut commissioned within that temple. And within this very obelisk, Hatshepsut inscribed the following words. I, Hatshepsut, made this monument for my father Amun, Lord of Thebes, presiding over Karnak, making for him two great obelisks of enduring granite. Okay, so these are so we have the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut and the giant obelisks, which are uh, which you can find in Karnak Temple. Those are the most famous architectural achievements of Pharaoh Hatshepsut. So when how, when was her mummy uh, discovered? In 1903, the British archaeologist Howard Carter, who is famous for having discovered the tomb of Tutankhamen, found her tomb in KV20. But unfortunately, he found only her sarcophagus. I mean, the sarcophagus of Hatshepsut was empty. There was no mummy inside it. And in 1989, there, were, there was an American uh, archaeologist named Donald Ryan who explored KV-60, and he found two uh, very old mummies, which were considered to be insignificant. And around 2005, a group of Egyptian and American archaeologists explored uh, KV-60 and took, found those two mummies within that tomb, pharaonic tomb, and then they, they took these mummies to the Egyptian museum, museum in Cairo. And after DNA tests and lots of investigation and the CT scans, etc., they managed to identify one of these mummies as being that of Pharaoh Hatshepsut. So I'm going to read you the first impressions of the, of the archaeologists when they first identified the mummy of Pharaoh Hatshepsut. So there was something strangely touching about her fingertips. Everywhere else about her person, all human grace had vanished. The ruffled linen around her neck looked like a fashion statement gone horribly awry. Her mouth, with the upper lip shelved over the lower, was a gruesome crimp. She came from a famous lineage of overbites. Her eye sockets were packed with blind black resin, her nostrils unbecomingly plugged with tight rolls of cloth. Her left ear had sunk into the flesh on the side of her skull, and her head was almost completely without hair. 
So these were the first impressions of the archaeologist when they identified her mummy. And this is the portrait of Pharaoh Hatshepsut. I think this brings us to the end of the video for today. I think it would be perfectly fair to say that Hatshepsut was actually among the very few women who, let's say, proved that you don't always have to be a man in order to successfully rule over a great empire or a great nation like ancient Egypt. So, okay, of course, if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to share them in the comment section. And thank you so much for your attention.